Um, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to this uh, YT Live session uh, with, with Rohan Dalal. Uh, today, I have Rohan, who's um, say a former student with Rohan, three, four years back, right? Yes, is yeah. It, is, is when you when you got done with the GMAT. And, and, and the reason I'm very excited about today's session is because um, uh, not only because it's, it's, it's with a former student, but also with a student who actually uh, started his MBA when he was 31 years old. So for a lot of you who are um, uh, uh, who are older candidates and, and wondering, hey, should you be applying? Uh, is the MBA right for you? We're going to talk about that. Uh, Rohan's from an oil and gas background. For those of you who have not downloaded um, uh, Rohan's profile, you guys can download it. Uh, I think I can, I can sh show this um, as well. Also, the other reason I'm excited about this is because um, Rohan applied in the early action round. Uh, he went his I'd say Rohan, the first year primarily was during uh, during COVID. So we're, we're going to talk about that experience. And uh, he's one of the few people who actually um, uh, got a scholarship while applying um, uh, in the early action round. Uh, so, so we're going to discuss the benefits, the pros and cons of applying in early action as well. Um, in addition to discussing, hey, what does it take to get into Fuqua? What does it take to get into Ross and, and, and a bunch of other schools that, that he got into? So first of all, welcome, Rohan. Uh, Hi. Thank you for the time out for this session. It's, it's a pleasure to uh, be with you and yeah, helping you. So yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> okay. Um, also, one of the, the, the other exciting things that Rohit just told me in our, in our pre, um, uh, pre webinar conversation is about 10 minutes back was that Rohan's wife is also studying in Fuqua. Uh, she's a year junior to him. And um, she's also a former EGMAT, things that I did not know. <laughs> so again, I'm also excited about probably a follow on session with her in about a month's time or so. So, uh, Rohan, just in terms, just to get everyone started, why don't you tell us a bit about your background? What did you do uh, prior to your MBA? And then, um, in general, why are you looking forward to doing an MBA? Uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, I did mechanical engineering. So, actually, I born and brought up in India and did my mechanical engineering. And again, like as most of us do, like after being an undergrad, we go for a master's. So I went for my MBA for very specific like oil and gas industry because at that point of time, I really wanted to understand the business aspect of oil and gas industry because of like oil turmoil, like the oil prices were quite below. So I just want to understand the business aspect of it. Uh, and after my completing my MBA, I joined Indian Oil. Uh, so I joined into the sales and marketing role for LPG, which is like liquefied petroleum gas. So I worked for about eight years uh, in like a marketing, like customer facing role where I was responsible for the value chain of like handling the entire value chain and making sure that customers get our product at the right time at the right way. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I, I know like oil and gas is not that attractive industry uh, now. And then everyone is like every industry is moving to sustainability, clean energy. Uh, and from also uh, from the functional point of view, uh, I was entirely in marketing and I thought if I continue in the same trajectory, I would remain in the same like marketing role. And I really wanted to explore strategy aspect of it because a couple of projects that I worked with the government and also with the leadership group, I worked with the strategy role kind of unofficially, uh, but yeah, it really had a lot of impact uh, at, at the ground level, like how it kind of uh, change the entire LPG business. So that I really like that really attracted me to to explore strategy uh, roles. Uh, so so getting out of oil and gas and explore different industries and also explore different functions that kind of led me to consider MBA would be the great choice. And since I already have an uh, MBA from Indian business school, so I thought um, like having an international explore uh, would make a, a more more sense. So that's why I thought uh, in the appen for GMAT and then finding uh, opportunities uh, for MBA schools uh, in, abroad, like especially in US. Okay, that's that's good. Um, let's actually get in over here. So we we kind of discussed why MBA in in, in that case. So um, one of the biggest things, um, by the way, just uh, overall. Um, you know, please uh, keep your questions coming and we, we're going to do this for about 40 minutes. Um, we have a prepared sort of question that we're going to go through for about 40 minutes and then Rohan is going to stick around for another 20 minutes or so to answer your questions. So oil and gas background, uh, wanted to do something beyond marketing. Um, 
why because probably people blamed you for all the price increases that happened in, in, <laughs> yeah. in India uh, <laughs> uh, for gasoline and uh, and and, and so um, so yeah so that's why I decided to do an MBA now one of the first thing you do when you do an MBA is w- one other question actually so in terms of your schooling were you convent educated or or or, or were you uh, I mean in terms of your schooling what was the role of English as 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 a part of your schooling so what was it like yeah so that was a kind of a challenging part for me throughout the entire journey not like uh, not just during the uh, gmat preparation but also like coming here and also uh, very uh, in an environment where you constantly speaking english because my schooling was in gujarati medium so I'm, i was born and brought up in gujarat and also like gujarat uh, state board so my entire schooling was in gujarati medium and also after undergrad i like i kind of did not have that uh, exposure where i we used to speak english a lot and also oil and gas industry and public sector even like we we speak english uh, when we are talking to leadership group but at the same time the kind of uh, team i was leading which are like lpg retailers so they are not that uh good in uh, english communication and also i worked in kind of like bareilly and agra so these are not like very like good yeah. uh, in terms of like cities yeah so that way kind of kind of uh, i did not have that exposure of uh, talking uh, english uh, throughout the like uh, my uh, professional career english was not natural for you. yes yes it was not natural yes so english wasn't so i think then let's get to the gmat piece so when you uh you 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 took three attempts you got a 750 an excellent score but when you started um you you had a verbal score of 25 uh, what were the key reasons that you struggled with verbal and then you know how did you improve from v25 to then you know v40 which is a 91st percentile on on verbal uh so uh so my first approach like when i got my v25 what i realized later when i got 750 was uh like i was focusing too much on a uh, high difficulty level questions a lot so i was practicing them a lot and uh, and at the same time i was not understanding the meaning part of uh, any question so critical reasoning or uh, uh, rc uh, and reading comprehension and cr so i was not understanding the what is author is trying to communicate and what's the like underlying meaning of uh, the question itself so that kind of threw me off uh, when i took my first gmat attempt because i was not able to even like i was not able to get my uh, 500 600 level or maybe 600 700 level uh, difficulty questions verbal so my preparation was not that good in terms of like how to handle like how to start from the scratch and how to enhance your skill set uh, to get to 700 800 level question mm-hmm. itself so that kind of like methodological uh, preparation was not there i was just hoping okay i need to cross 700 level then i'll be good but like gmat is not that kind of exam so uh yeah i mean that end of i thought so uh, what I, made you improve from you know v25 is what 2030th percentile 25th percentile or so to that 91st percentile what was the process that you went through and what realizations did you have so what what changed yeah so apart from so uh, what really changed i i i started from the scratch i just uh through every understanding that i had uh, after my second attempt of gmat i threw everything and then i just started fresh from the scratch like let's start from 500 600 level patients then i i once i committed so i i used to prepare a log okay i'm um, i'm answering 10 patient out of 10 how many uh, right answer i'm getting once i started getting 9 out of 10 like 9 out of 10 or maybe 10 out of 10 then i started okay now i can move to 600 to 700 level question difficulty level mm-hmm. then at that time okay my bar was i need to get 8 or 9 out of 10 right so mm-hmm. once i crossed that bar then i started moving to 700 800 level questions but apart from that you know, preparation part i know the quant want is my kind of heavy like i am very good at quant so i did not prepare much on quant side i just started preparation like 15 to 20 days back before my third attempt but apart from that on the background it took me a lot of time to getting used to of uh, the language of uh, like a uh, kind of uh, american language because i used to read a lot of like wall street journal economist such kind of uh, and those reading really help me okay wo- how they they talk how they speak and how they like uh, communicate how they write so i think that really helped me to understand uh, a bit better and apart from the third piece was i i really focus on meaning part rather than focusing on just grammar rule because initially like 500 600 or 600 700 you have a very obvious uh, errors of grammars 
but if you move to 700 and 800 then you start realizing okay it's more about meaning rather than grammar grammatical error because the grammatical error is anyone it's very easy to find out so i thought maybe meaning is something i need to uh, understand what author is actually trying to communicate and that's where i kind of things click then i could answer those questions easily uh, in my third attempt so essentially what you're saying is you know someone who's from a uh, someone who's actually studied in in their native language for you it was gujarati and then you know for many people it could be hindi or or bengali um you know those guys can still achieve you you achieve 98 percentile 750 is a 98 percentile on the gmat if you focus on, on on the logic piece of things and don't just go blindly answering questions learn the fundamentals right learn the meaning-based approach and for example in sentence correction or do pre-thinking right. if you're doing in critical reasoning and 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 then you know you you need to practice but practice the right question achieve the right proficiency first yes so so definitely and then for those of you who've just joined us uh, you know we will be taking your questions i see some really interesting questions so then let's talk about b school selection so you 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 applied to 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 four schools you you had fuqua you have columbia you had ross and darden and um, and and so why these four and were there others that you considered um and and so i think there's another question by sam which is very similar in that case Oh, yeah. So uh, in terms of school selection, uh, I, my like uh, career goal in terms of like short term and long term goal was like uh, general management and also tech and consulting. So these are the three uh, areas that I really wanted to explore. And yeah, consulting was my plan A. Uh, uh, so I, I thought from that perspective, I think all the schools, uh, they were really uh, good in consulting specifically and also in tech. So that's that's how I, I started thinking about what are the schools that I can really think about and I can really like apply to. And then as I, I, and I also uh, uh, like explore other schools, but uh, I couldn't find that connection during the admission process. Like uh, and these are the four schools where I really connected with the students and also admission committee. I really sought help from the second years and first years and that kind how, of how did you make those connections i think it's through uh, linkedin or through uh admission admission uh, admission uh students in, uh, at the their uh, university and mba uh, website so i used to connect with them i used to find some time through linkedin like uh, or any normal setup and yeah, I mean, like uh, from that, I got to know more about the schools, like uh, some insight of okay, how do I apply, what's like, uh, what's the uh, process is like, and how can I, uh, I can put up and stand out application. So, considering all of that, I thought these are the four schools where I can really uh, put up and stand out application. So okay. that's how Fuqua, uh, Columbia, uh, Darden, and also. Uh, Ross came out and again the early action that I really want to uh, explore because I thought early action really actually mathematically I wouldn't say the what's going behind the door but mathematically mathematically it makes uh, it increases your uh, chances because the seats are still all open and uh, there are very few who apply actually because some some of the early action are, are binding so from that part of view also i fuqua uh, columbia and also darden they were the early action round where i really wanted to put my best application in very early and also showcase my strong interest in 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 this school so i think that's why i i chose these four schools okay so but your 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 long term goal or the short term to go to transition into strategy was that something that also played a part in uh, yeah uh, yeah so uh, again so uh, this all four schools they are very uh, good in consulting so that is something i really want to explore management consulting strategy consulting and i went through their employment report and i felt okay these schools like this a uh, big consulting firm they really uh, take uh, uh, students from this uh, business school so that is also something that uh, that was in my mind when i was applying got it perfect thank you uh, that that helps um, so um, let's talk about fuqua then in that case so um, in in terms of what we're trying to figure out is what does fuqua look for in um, in candidates when it accepts and and i'm going to kind of uh, um, kind of quote something so so duke a few questions duke's looking to is known to be looking for students who uh, are not only su successful in that rigorous academic environment but uh, also help share the belief that business can change the world 
so um, so so how did you put so first of all you know how does that come up in in, in the admissions process and uh, uh, so the other thing is moreover they are also looking for authenticity humility and genuine appreciation for the strength that lies in in that difference so how did you interpret these two statements and how did you showcase these values through through your application yeah so uh, whenever i was uh, interacting with the students and also the admission committee i really wanted i was very open about okay these are my challenges and this is something uh, like not challenges but yeah this is how i am and also in terms of like admission process so uh, like uh, in the uh, application uh, also assess also i think let's go back i think so let's go back and say interpret these statements so so um, few goes looking for people who who would be successful in that academic environment and then they're looking for uh, people who through businesses can they can change the world um and they're also looking for so how did you interpret that piece with regards to hey what should you reflect in your application so what what how should that translate into into stuff uh, that that goes in your application um and then they talk about these values which is authenticity humility and a genuine appreciation for the strength that lies in in in, in the difference so so how did you what what do you interpret mm-hmm. with this with regards to what is it that they're looking for and then how did you reflect that uh so in terms of like uh, fuqua really looks for people who really wanted to like contribute to the community itself like fuqua community and also outside the community maybe durham community or other other community mm-hmm. so they really want to okay uh, you are here to uh, learn something but at the same time once you learn how you want to how you plan to give something back to the community itself so this is where uh making a difference with your diversity uh plays a big role and that really you can reflect through one of the essay which also talks about how you in plan to interact and contribute to fuqua uh so that is something there and apart from that uh i think uh they really want to know you so it's always good to uh, portray yourself like just show that your personality what is unique to you uh through your 25 random things and what is like it should not be like just professional thing you can uh, also showcase your fun part okay this is something i did which is very unique to me which is also funny thing so they really want to know uh, the candidate it's not just like they are not just rely on gmat and academic stuff they really 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 want to know your okay, what's what what is your personality is what makes you rohan like so that is something if you can showcase that throughout your essay so resume, think, let's go to it what did you talk about the 25 random things because it's a very interesting question can you yeah. can so you tell me i did not talk of those things yeah so in 25 random it was very hard for me because i actually went to my school journey to entire my professional journey to gather all the random things that i did so it was as funny as i i, I watched three back to back movies in theater so it was like that funny as that was like so i had like kind of like all so those tell, tell, tell me 10 of those 25 right now <laughs> so one was that okay i watched uh, three back to back movies in theater on sunday one was uh, mm-hmm. uh, like uh, one was like okay so i have a habit of eating dessert along with my main course so that is something i always order when i'm eating lunch and dinner with the main course i i want dessert right now not after the dinner or lunch so that is something okay i i i okay so watch three back to back movies uh eats dessert okay what else right uh, then other one was i i started a business uh, with my partner who whose name was also rohan so we started a kind of pastry business during my school days so like yeah, I mean, that is something that rohan and rohan pastry so that is something i i had the third one was i had a river rafting with my mother which is a very unusual because sometimes like most of the time they, they, you go with the friends but i had a river rafting first experience with my mother so that is something i had yeah I man these are the four things i think okay i i talked a lot about my photography so i i do photography so i talked a lot okay why this is my particular this picture is my favorite one what's like what's the feeling behind that and why this uh, this community gets something bigger than the picture itself so i mm-hmm. talked about that as well there were a couple of two three things which i felt a bit more on professional side like i won this thing which really made me proud and that also made me realize and one more thing i also brought in my uh, my kind of vulnerable side because i had some health issue during my childhood 
So I also brought in that said, okay, this is something I went through uh, during my childhood, but that also made me more resilient uh, in the process. And now I'm not afraid of failures. I, I look forward to failure as a learning curve and how can I I take that learning uh, to be successful. So I, I showed all the side of me. Like, and a couple of things were like, even like I did my my some of my friend did not know and I I, I uh, mentioned it in my Fuqua school like uh, admit like application essay, so like you have to be very open about like you have to be you so in twenty five random thing the journal line would be just make sure that it it has to unique it, it has to be unique it's not something okay you you take this particular bullet point and you cannot apply to any other person so it, it has to unique to you like so that's that yeah, and, and i think they, they tell you a lot so when you, for example the fact that you opened that pastry shop when you were in school shows that you were entrepreneurial yes. at that point you're not you're willing to take risks um uh, so that that's very interesting the fact that you you eat uh, dessert with your main course shows that okay you want to just say Try something you know, with what's on your mind it doesn't matter how awkward it how yeah. awkward people think that is although i would really say if you're a gujarati then you probably your main course is dessert itself yeah. <laughs> so so you don't need the dessert but, but 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 bottom line is you do what you like and and then you don't really as long as it feels right to you yeah, right. you yeah. don't worry about uh, you know what 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 others think about it so i think that's and 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 what we don't think about is these are important things um yes. river rafting with 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 your mother again it's an unusual thing but it just talks about your relationship with with your mother and um and, and so i think that's something that's there photography i mean this is kind of uh oil and gas photography so do you, do you actually know nishant panigray yeah 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 yeah. He's a photographer like, too. <laughs> yeah he's a photographer too but yeah i'm like we've been to touch uh, like uh, yeah, I was talking to him as well throughout the journey. Like he, uh, the he's a former EG matter. He's a year senior to you, I think. From yeah, 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 he's a senior to me uh, one year. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. He had an incredible journey to that. Yes, it's a small world. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I when when he is the G matter, I looked at his 500 pixels account. He had some really good photographs. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. I haven't looked at yours. I should. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. I, I, I like too. photography too. Oh, nice, sir. So, uh, so, so the reason why you see my video is a bit more clear is because it's my uh, it's my mirrorless camera that's oh. camera, not <laughs> okay. But yeah, I'm like yeah, I'm like overall like I think uh, and also it was very surprising. So once you like once I reached here, the the admission committee member also asked me, okay, d where is your camera? Like something like that. So. Mm -hmm. They actually remember all of your points and they can relate to you. So it's not, they are not just reading for the sake of reading or just to make a decision. They really yeah. want to know you. So I, I absolutely agree. I think that's an interesting thing. I want to actually take that question, put it up as a part of EGMAT hiring process or hiring process. So, so, um, <laughs> so here's a, an interesting question. I think let's just transition from here and to to the letter of recommendation now one of the things that that's there with fuqua is that it requires only one letter of recommendation and and and, and so which means that it becomes a lot more uh, important because you don't have two so um, who did you choose how did you decide on this and and then how did you prepare that person considering that also you're in a government organization so so uh, about letter of recommendation i would say uh, the best person would be a uh, the person who knows you in and out who who has worked you with like a, a, a long time so that he knows or he or she knows everything about you like what are your skill sets what are your weaknesses and how you worked on those weaknesses to be better so i think that is something you should consider as when you are uh, uh, choosing uh, your recommender the second would be i would say a uh, someone who is actually overseeing your position so someone who is a uh, senior to you would make more sense because i think it kind of gives a, a, a kind of sense of trust okay this person has overseen this per, per, like rohan's journey and the work so he knows uh, she knows better than most of other like peers or juniors to him because sometimes juniors and peers might be biased uh, so I think that is something, uh, uh, these are the two things I would say uh, should be considered. So that's how I, I uh, went about it. Uh, and also in terms of like what to include. Also, I think uh, what I did, I was very transparent with my 
letter of recommendation i went uh, up to him and uh, just like i uh, like asked them okay this is the process is and this is also part of the process for an mba school uh, application so would you be able to uh, uh, write a le- letter of recommendation and then just discuss okay this is uh, and also you have to be very strategic itself so your your entire pro- so it's not like your resume is talking about something else then you are talking something else in your essay and then you are uh, portraying some different story in your letter of recommendation everything has to tie back to one person like okay this is rohan so in resume if you're talking some professional and and resume is a very concise bullet point so if you get a chance if you want to elaborate on some of the challenging project use that in your essay or if you don't get chance in your essay then you can use that in your letter of recommendation so this is how you strategically uh, should play around the entire thing how you sh- like just uh, like letter of recommendation also you have your your entire sentence should make sense okay it tells about you so like everything has to make sense so i think uh, so yeah i'm like yeah, uh, i think the parallel that i can draw is think of your essays your letter of recommendation your resume your your response to your interview questions your response to your application questions think of them as a set of gears that need to work yes. together the teeth yes. should not um kill each other they should actually be perfectly yeah. synchronized yeah and 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 so if your essays are talking about hey i'm proud of this xyz achievement uh, professionally and if a letter of recommendation doesn't even mention that achievement yes. yeah then then that's and all this, yeah that's off yes so it it has to be watertight uh, watertight story so if yeah. you are mentioning something it should be corroborated with your letter of recommendation or if you feel something is missing out you don't get a chance to portray in your essay then maybe yes, you then you see yes Yeah, so I mean, if for example, through through your achievements, you're not able to really talk about how you've coached individuals, then that's something that you should discuss with your recommender to mm-hmm. to write, and 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 especially for a school such as Fuqua, where community is a big piece, and and contributing to the community is really important. Right, and also like if you are transparent enough, if you are open enough about the process, I think I'm sure yeah, like. everyone would be willing to help you so out so two questions on this first of all how early did you approach your recommender so can you map a timeline for me as to this is when the lor was due and this is when you approached it and then the very fact that this is a government organization did you face any challenges uh yes yeah. so in terms of like uh, yeah government organization i think it has a different uh, like uh, aspect right. to- <laughs> yeah, I um, mean, like it, it, it's a bit challenging, but yeah, I think I was fortunate enough that I got my like uh, supervisor and boss who was like really helpful throughout the process. But I, I'm sure it is not the case with most of us. I think you have to play smart. But yeah, I think if you are good enough, I think if you can just convince him or her about your like the process, I think that is something. But for that also, it's not something. uh you reach out to them a uh, two day three days before your letter of recommendation is due or your application process i think it's a long process so you reach out to so i actually reach out reached out to him for almost two months before the application was due uh just to make sure that okay this is something i'm preparing for and i think i i would need your help in letter of recommendation so would you be able to then i sat uh, with him for almost three to five sessions around okay this is something i'm writing in my essay do you think uh, you are, you would uh, be getting compl- the recommender is also very 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 yes, important yes yes so yeah i mean like yeah means uh, sit with uh, the, uh, the your recommender and then just make sure that okay uh, this is something i'm planning to uh, write about or i i want you to highlight uh, would you be uh, comfortable with that and if you are comfortable then these are the things that you can talk about so i think it's it's very like uh, integral process like you also talk about the and also you seek guidance from the person itself so it's not something our very process that is done in silo it's like combined process one of the things which is which is there is you know uh, this getting that letter of recommendation it it in my opinion does two or three things one is of course uh, you have a professional um, uh, 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 someone who's managed you directly who's recommending you number one number two i think you this is one of the first for many people is one of the, the first or the second time they're actually um, uh kind of um uh, what's the right word to say they 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 they're initiating a collaboration for for mm-hmm. practically their their own benefit and that's something that you know an mba teaches you to really say how do you Collab- kind of uh, uh, collaborate and, and and how do you create some sort of a mini cohort where you you where 
the other person understands that that the primary mm. victory is yours but then you make your victory that other person's victory as well right. and, and and so i think that's something which which is a really important skill that an mba gives you um and and and, and so i think this is really important one of the other things that i i'd like to tell people is uh, you know um, when you do get into a b school and you write that linkedin post don't forget to thank that recommender I yeah really yeah important. yeah actually yeah so that that you mentioned so once i got my uh, admissions and also when i was just planning to fly to us i thank all the persons through uh, my uh, whatsapp or linkedin okay i'm planning to attend this course it was mm-hmm great to get your guidance and it was really helpful and and also at the same time you build connections because mba is all about connection and networking so and you would seek their guidance uh, mba like getting your admission is not a part of the journey it's the start of a journey i guess so <laughs> yeah I, i agree with that one of the other things that i would really just mention on is race we talked about giving a little or two months and uh, so telling your recommenders two months and that's really important because a letter of recommendation is a very sp- follows a very specific template assuming fuqua follows a standard gmac yes, template yeah, yeah. and and just doing that is is equivalent to writing a mini b school application yeah. so if you think you need about a month a month and a half to write a b school application your recommender who's not doing this for himself yes. definitely needs two months to to do that so especially if you want the recommender to do justice so that's again very very important Overall. and and sometimes giving them a freedom and flexibility throughout the letter of recommendation also helps you to maybe uh, some skills that you are not aware of and you you think it should be highlighted in your essay so i'd say it's a two way process or something uh, the person who managed you thinks okay this is something you are very good at and you can think about that in your okay i can include that uh, particular project or that particular skill in my essay itself so i think that is also very good Yeah, one of the other things you know, I see a bunch of questions where people are talking about why do schools choose X schools? Why do you choose school X or Y? Um, and the other thing is low GPA. How do you address that? So one of the things that you would really see is on our channel we have about forty interviews where we, we you know, each interview is uh, tackles a certain specific problem. Uh, this one is an oil and gas engineer, or someone who um, is it's an MBA over thirty uh, scholarship from Fuqua despite early action. and um, and 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 so um, so again if you subscribe to our channel you'd be able to see good answers and real case studies for pretty much any question that that you're looking to uh, to 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 really answer so then let's talk about this let's talk about go to go to the scholarship piece over here and uh, and, and 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 so um, how did you get a scholarship and what do you think was the role of that gmat score in in scholarship okay so uh, i think uh, so i applied in uh, early action so one of the upside of early action is like your chances of getting an admit is uh, increase because school knows that uh, for you uh, the school is the top priority that is why you are applying to early action so but that being said they know that you are uh, like that that school is your top priority so that kind of okay gives you kind of a kind of A, a mindset okay even if you if they don't provide you a scholarship you'll anyway come to uh, and accept that decision itself so that's why early action sometimes you don't get uh, much scholarship because early action is early action and you don't have competing offer at that point of time because other schools might be uh, having only round 1 round 2 and round 3 so that way i think sometimes so just, you just really add to this so when you apply an early action you're applying first of all before round 1 number yes. two you know uh, uh, uh you if you get an admission ethically you cannot apply to another school so 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 the school knows that this is going to be a binding decision for for you so so the school may not be um uh, may not be willing to offer you scholarship oh. so the upside is you have more seats you might there's a, a higher chance to secure an admit the downside is the chances of scholarship are lower when it comes to early action but you were able to secure one and so yeah so i i got uh, some scholarship um, uh, maybe because like uh, a gmat score or something that in your background that they find something a uh, very unique and it gives them a diversity in self mm-hmm. so in from that point of view i think uh, you get some scholarship it's a merit base so your gmat score matters your academics where you uh, uh, did your undergrad and where you worked i think all of the piece together ties into 
uh, getting a scholarship. But at the same time, I was able to negotiate uh, my scholarship because of the pandemic. So I was upfront about, OK, I am I'm funding my uh, entire MBA on my own and considering the pandemic and the challenges that we would have as an international coming for the coming for MBA to foreign country for the first time. Uh, would you be able to reconsider my scholarship amount? And I think Fuqua was great enough to consider my scholarship, and they actually doubled my scholarship. So <laughs> that way, but yeah, but but I, again, that that does not mean that it's a regular process. I think sometimes, if you have some challenging or if if you are open about it, and they might consider. So I think it's really important. So for those of you who are, are, are looking for the, the LOR template, you can go there, go here and, and get the LOR template. That's first of all. The second thing which is there is, so you're, you're uh, Akansha, you said your wife, right? Yeah, Akansha. Yes. So, so she got, did she apply an early action round as well? Yes, she also applied in the early action, yes. She also got a scholarship, right? Yes, right, yes. So, so um, there's two ET matters getting scholarship. That's one. <laughs> So um, and and she not only got so so, so she's also studying at Fuqua. She's a year junior to you. Yeah. Uh, but she also got a full ride from a cup. You got. She you were telling me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, uh, Georgia Tech as well and other Georgia schools. Tech. Yes. Yeah. So so that's that's wonderful. So she got a full ride from Georgia Tech. She has a seven thirty on the GMAT. Um, so so again, you know, uh, that's kind of where you can really look at this and say georgia tech definitely you know scholarships gmat score plays a big part over there in fact um, next week we'll be um, uh, actually um, writing an article and this is where i think Rohan, we reached out to you as a part of this exercise where we where i think uh, karthike reached out and asked for for how much scholarship did you get right. in addition to this so we are what, an exercise that we've been doing is is that hey we get question with regards to what gmat score should we aim for mm -hmm. and and we collected data from from students uh, from about 400 odd students and then this is mm -hmm. you know complete profile data for 400 students oh. who applied to USB schools and um, and uh, with top 20 M7 um, and and beyond top 20 so three mutually exclusive mm -hmm. categories so we removed M7 from top 20 and what we found really was that uh, you know um, but 80 percent of all the folks who, who got scholarship they had a 740 or higher mm -hmm. and um, and and then um, that scholarship amount, if you look at um, top 20 schools, that that number, so not M7, but top 20. So the difference between a 740 and a 760, it's very interesting, the statistics. Yes. Now, it's still not causality, but I think there is some implicit causality given that you have 400 students there, um, is, is that if you're looking at M7, the scholarship amount between 740 and 760, that delta is about $22,000. But if oh. you go to beyond M7, top 20, that scholarship amount is about the delta between a 740 and a 760 score to the same set of top oh, schools. Okay. The delta is about eighty six thousand oh. dollars or so. Right. And 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 that that was very very interesting for us. Those twenty points are are, are worth a lot depending on where you're applying. M seven right. versus top twenty. And if you go to beyond top twenty, uh, it, it goes even crazy. Right. So uh, when you go to so so. Um, Beyond top 20, there are schools who not only give you a full ride, mm -hmm. but we've had students who get paid $2,600 a month to study at a certain school. All right. All right. Yeah. So, so, so your living expenses are taken care of. Now, in your case, uh, let's talk about because you got some scholarship, you still had to take loans, right? Yes. Right. And, and you, you went for Discover loans and then you got loans at you know, very interesting, what, 5% or so? Yeah, 5.5, something around that. 5.5% yes. or so. And you're saying even today. So for you, in your opinion, it's better to take a loan from the U.S., from a, from a U.S. entity rather than from an Indian entity? If you were to compare. Yeah, yes, yes. Because in uh, India, if you take a loan, as far as I remember, I think you need to uh, have some collateral to, like, uh, you have to put down something uh, as, a your, your house, yeah. as a collateral or something. Collateral. Like uh, and here it's not the case. And uh, I think um, so every school has its own uh, like internal process of approving this, uh, the loan itself. So Fuqua has uh, some link. So I applied through that link uh, to get to the discover loan application part. So I applied with that and they have a like very set amount of, okay, this is uh, the uh, entire like tuition fee and also the living fee would look like. So the cost of attendance is like 95,000 or uh, uh, 100K. 
and out of that uh, we would be able to provide this much amount but in in the case of discover they give you the entire cost of attendance uh, in prodigy i think it's like 80 to 90% uh, of your cost of attendance that that much amount you can take as a loan but for the, the case of discover i think you can take 100% of cost of attendance so i applied and they had their internal process of approval they get it uh, approved from the fuqua admission committee and finance committee mm-hmm. and once you are approved then uh, they give you the scholarship oh, oh so yeah. loan, uh, loan. The loan the, yes i wish it were that easy for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay but coming back to this but the interest rates from us entities are, are they i mean are, are they lower than what they are from let's say an indian entity for you uh, yes it is like i got it around like 5.5 so which was lower than like what i was getting i think uh, we checked in uh, india so we are getting around around 10% something around that uh, yeah so i think just a comparison over there and if you guys like this conversation do uh, do press the like but i uh, i can't but but essentially um, the other pieces if you take the loan from a us entity most likely you'll be earning in, in dollars so you in some yeah. ways are are hedging against the 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 uh, the exchange rate change also. Yes, yeah, that is also a big thing. Yes, <laughs> it does have an impact on you know how much you pay back. How much you're paying, yeah. So, um, so that's there. Um, and I think it's also a very easy process. I think it also like like it's it's not that everything is online, so you don't need to. But but in India, you have to visit the bank. You have to go through the entire process. And for the Prodigy and the Discover, I think everything is online. Okay. So let's talk about a couple of other things, and then we'll open this forum to questions. We talked about scholarship. Um, so, few asks about you know to share your post and career goals, and then it talks about this alternate plan that you have. What was that, and I mean, how did you tackle this question? So uh, my uh, my first plan was uh, getting into the consulting. So that was my primary plan, uh, short term, like uh, getting into management consulting uh, with expertise in. Uh, energy, but plan B was also something similar to that, but altogether not completely different because I thought it would it would not look good on me. Okay, I'm not like if I'm saying okay, this is my plan and plan B is entirely different, then I'm not sure of like, what I want to do. So I felt uh, like something ties back to some function or maybe industry or uh, some other role. So I, my alternate plan was getting into strategy role for tech company. So that okay. was like, okay, even still I, I kept the strategy part itself in the primary, like uh, the hanging point. And my plan A was strategy consulting. If not, then strategy in internal consulting role for any tech company. Got it. Perfect. Sounds wonderful. I think that that that, that makes sense. It was still consistent with the strategy yes. piece. It just that the the entity was changed. Now the tech company. Do you look at what companies come and hire at Fuqua and or or where do people go? And is the, was tech you know a desire or was that a planned choice? No, it was a planned choice because uh, uh, like uh, like yeah, I mean like tech is also very much high. Like uh, Fuqua recruits a lot of people to tech as well because tech has a very strong presence here. So I think most of the big. Uh, companies in tech, so Apple, Google, uh, Microsoft, uh, they all come to Fuqua, even the Facebook also, they we do have like formal presentation and the application process, like internal application process. But at the same time, tech also have a off campus. So you can definitely apply off campus. And uh, as far as I know, Fuqua has a very strong presence. So like during my internship also they they when they got to know i'm from fuqua they really like okay like my okay you are from fuqua so they really value that and respect that got it perfect um just a bit off topic guys so um, one of the things that that we are doing um uh, in, in next week is we have a session where we will talk about uh, how we created eg mart with about ten thousand dollars investment um and, and and so this is something that one of our former students, uh, Ritika, who I interviewed last week, she said, "Hey, why wouldn't we talk about EG Math story?" And um, and 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 so uh, so we'll we'll discuss that to really say how we started, how much you know, when, how we spend that initial those initial ten thousand dollars, and then in general how we bootstrap the entire company, and then we're going to talk about the vision for the future. How are we executing that vision? What all stuff would you see coming in 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 the next um, couple of months or so? So if you're interested in that, that's something that uh, you can definitely look at. And how did my um, Babson experience help me um, kind of structure all of this? So, so yeah, 
so, so definitely attend that and then we also have a couple of other free sessions that i'll talk about which are this weekend okay so uh, let's i think are we going to have a couple of other interesting questions that are already there so let's talk about the recruitment process at fuqua and and and, and so um, you know how, what's the recruitment process and uh, how is it different from uh, uh, from from what you've experienced in india all right so uh, here on something very uh, kind of uh, i did not expect much but yeah, i'm like uh, i felt like here the recruitment process is bit on network heavy so you really need to build a network uh, to explore different positions and also to get an interview in, invite itself so uh, companies would have their formal presentation where they, the few alums would come and uh, talk about their experience and also about the application process but after that what uh, happens offline is you reach out to them individually you understand more about your role how you can portray yourself for the role so that you at least get an interview invite and once you get an interview invite how you can uh, uh, prepare for the interview itself so i think it it is it has a lot of networking uh, stuff going on so which is not uh, you, uh, like not of like it's not very common in india itself because even i know like even i talk to a couple of my indian iocns uh, who are in consulting firm and ask them okay how did you recruit for this consulting firm after they completed their mba at iams and for them it's very like structure process the companies come on day one and they, they go through your resume and they shortlist here networking plays a big role if you don't network then you are not increasing your chance of getting shortlisted for the interview so which one do you prefer i think networking one because i think it it also showcases your personality how unique you are and talks a lot about your experience which you don't get chance if you are just applying through your resume and just appearing for the interview so i think i i prefer the networking uh, the the recruitment also process it tells you you know who you are who would you be working for yes yeah and 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 and, and so it's not that you're just going blind because Blindly, some yes. came on campus and and you passed a an aptitude test and and then suddenly you start in an interview right yeah mainly yeah, it also helps you to get to know so if companies interviewing you you also take you are also interviewing them because you are an mba candidate and very prestigious school like uh, any like top 20 schools like any other so it's it's a prestigious school itself so they also want you to work for them so i think it's not it's a two way process you also getting to know them they are also getting to know you so if you go with that mindset it also helps you to understand more about the company so i think which is something not common in india yeah i i i always believe it's like um that you can feed yourself in two ways either someone can serve food to you or you can learn how to hunt if you learn how to hunt you're going to continue to feed yourself forever and uh, and and that 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 uh, networking process is yes. learning how to hunt and and that will allow you to make better decisions in life um so let's kind of look at some questions here we're uh, but uh, we have about 12 minutes for questions so second mba stigma was there any stigma uh, no it was not a stigma because uh, admission committee do realize that it, it's in india it's it's very common to pursue a mba after uh, your undergrad so they understand but at the same time uh, you kind of also justify why you are applying for second mba so uh, for me it was getting an international exposure uh, second was uh, having an experiential learning component uh, to the mba uh, experience itself and the third one was uh, i did not have a work experience before i did my first mba so i did not know what skill set i need to improve uh, because i did not have that experience what it takes to be successful in real world so it was more an academic focus so but now i know okay i need to improve on my communication i need to be concise so that is how i can uh, incre- i can improve myself uh, during my mba and mba i felt a fuqua especially in fuqua mba is very safe space where you can try different things and also without any fear you can fail so and people actually appreciate if even if you fail so i think at least you tried so i think this is how uh, you can justify why you are going for second mba yeah i absolutely agree with you so i think i don't think there's a stigma about a second mba i think a lot of b schools recognize that in india specifically we we do our first mba i didn't do it that way by the way but um, we do our first mba right out of uh, 
college and um, and and we don't know what we're doing most of the time so right. MBA is absolutely fine in fact um, one of the other things we were talking about was that um, you started your, first, your your second MBA when you were 31 years of age it's like were you the one of the older students and you said no there are many students who are even older than me and, yeah. and 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 so so even that 30 year that you hear it's, it's, it, it's not I would say in my opinion it's not that 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 it's not the end of the road for you. Now, logically speaking, you know, you the world we live in, you want to be a lifelong learner. And um, and, and so I feel the need to, for example, uh, go to a B school for three months and, and update my skills today, even though I have an MBA from the US. And that's something that you, you would feel the need every four to five years because you need to upskill yourself to stay competitive. So, so that's something, I mean, if, for example, I could find three months, I would... I would do a formal course in AI and business and, and, and how to structure AI related projects. Uh, because that's, I mean, let's call it we're doing a lot of expert AI and, and I feel there's a lot more that we can do. Right. Um, so, so, uh, so yeah, so I don't think that's, that's a problem that second MBA piece. And yeah, I mean, like, uh, just, just like a fun follow up, like, just like mention that in your, uh, uh, like optional essay, like it is a great opportunity, which you can utilize to justify by second MBA. Yes, I absolutely. So use those optional essays really, really well. In fact, uh, Poonam Tandon from my essay review, she actually did a webinar yesterday of about 12 various, 12 ways in which you could use an optional essay. That's one of the ways that, that she mentioned. So, so an optional essay could be used to address various things. One of them is is why the second MBA, the other could be why, why the low GPA and, and, and a bunch of other things. And I couldn't even think about things that she had over there. So um, early admit versus R1, is there a difference in scholarship and chances of um, admit? And this is an opinion that, that I think I, I, you'll have to really think about. And, and, and we always say hindsight is twenty twenty. but what would you say or what can you say? Uh, yeah, even like I felt uh, uh, if you are early admit, then the amount of scholarship you get and even if you, you are like kind of getting a scholarship itself is a bit on a lower side, which is my personal point of view because uh, because like if you are applying for round one, round two and almost all the accept and decline decision happens at the same like within a week time line. So if you have competing uh, offer and if someone like admission committee really liking your profile and they really want you to bring to their school, then they would increase your scholarship itself uh, so that you attend their school. So from that perspective also, if you are uh, applying to round one, round two, then I think it also helps you to get more scholarship. But yeah, I mean like, but again, at the same time, you are coming from a very competitive, like you are coming into competitive batch itself because R1 and R2 are the most competitive uh, admission rounds. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's, it's a balancing act. I think, frankly, that's kind of where, um, what, what, in my opinion, um, I'm, I, I never paid for my MBA, just to really say, I've never paid for my education all my life. Um, and, and, and my friends actually jokes like you make money from education. And my response to them is I make money so that they don't have to pay money to education institutions. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm always of the opinion that, um, you know, uh, you should apply in the round when you are ready. Yes. And, um, if you have a high GMAT score and if you have a good profile, I mean, that's the, the data that we'll be publishing. So good profile and high GMAT score makes you competitive at multiple schools. And, um, and, 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 and so I think in that way, you know, round one, if we have a 750 and a, and a good profile, I would apply, for example, in round one versus the early action round, in my opinion, if I am ready with, 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 with the best application I can put forward. Um, if I'm not ready with the best application I, I can put forward, I'd apply in round two. I mean, for example, for me, I wasn't ready with the best application I could put forward in round one. I still applied in round one. I didn't do a single admit. In round two, when I applied, and they were equally good schools, I got multiple full rides, and I got into every school I applied to. Oh, <laughs> so, so, so so it's it's yeah. So in my opinion, there's enough seats, especially if you have a high GMAT score. Uh, yes, so, yeah. So, so I mean, think about it this way: seven sixty is ninety nine percent. There are about two thousand people who have a seven sixty. Out of those two thousand, uh, in my opinion, from the math that I did, there are about four hundred Indians. Those 400 Indians are applying across rounds, 400 to 500. Uh, and probably half of them are applying to ISP. If you're applying to the USB schools, then, then definitely you're one of the select few. Mm, so, so, so you can pick and choose. 
Um, so then let's talk about your Fuqua experience. Um, uh, so there are two questions. Ayush and Deepa have asked these questions. Any particular courses or electives that stood out? And then Deepa's question is memorable learning experiences. But, but let's kind of start with this one. Uh, yeah, so a uh, couple of course that I really liked. One was uh, uh, on the uh, leadership ethics and organization, which talks about, OK, apart from like uh, financial benefits and financial aspect of business, what are the other like leadership and ethical issues that we, we generally address uh, during the business settings and while we are working in a professional settings. So like how you negotiate, what it takes to be a successful negotiator. So this is something real and other ethical stuff, uh, which is kind of very common, but we don't address that much. So this is something I really talk uh, like. The uh, uh, the second uh, course or elective that I really like uh, is, or uh, actually I'm looking forward to is operation strategy because I come from operation background, kind of like marketing operations. So I, I like operations and which is taught by very good professor Robert Sweeney. So that is something I'm looking forward to. These are the two, uh, two uh, electives that I can think of right now. Uh, and in terms of peer, so the memorable memory would be, uh, I guess, yeah, so uh, like just like being in the, uh, I guess, like being here, like everywhere around you and just having a like get together and just talk about uh, our experience i think that is something I, I i think i still enjoy we we still like every weekend we just uh, sit together and just talk about how our weekend uh, week, week went and uh, like yeah what are our next plans and that i think that is something uh, like i i really like enjoy uh, spending time with them so that is something i i think would be my memorable uh, thing. i i absolutely agree with that second part absolutely so, so because um, I remember some of the most memorable memories are from my Babson days, uh, and, and they are about weekends, and we would get together with friends, yes. and, um, and and so I think that's something which um, which um, would would stay. So I mean, I, I tell people that your MBA is probably going to be the happiest time in your life. It would be stressful, but yes. then you won't you won't have happiness if you don't have stress. I mean, you need you need both. Um, you actually make some of your best friends doing your MBA. Um, I'm still friends with a lot of folks who who, um, uh, who I met during the MBA. We go for vacations together, and um, and then so uh, I think that's a, that's it's, it's it's a life changing experience in many ways. Yes. So um, we, just coming to uh, uh, webinars, we have some excellent webinars this weekend. We have a sentence correction webinar. Or, you know, Rohan talked about the meaning based approach. In this webinar, you're gonna hear after a very long time from Pyle, uh, who created the meaning based approach. Uh, and, and you're going to see the third iteration of that approach. So if you've not uh, registered for that webinar, definitely register for that. And uh, so that's that that one. And then we have an algebra webinar uh, that um, that we have. Again, this is probably hosting this webinar for the first time. She is the one who created the new quant course. So you're going to see um, the, the process skills that we talked about in the new quant course being applied real time over here. So um, so that's something that uh, that you should uh, look at as well if, if uh, inequality is absolute value. Those are um, areas that you need to need to brush up. Um, an interesting question: Can you reject the early application decision if you get in? Yes, actually you can because they still uh, give you the option of accept and reject. So you can reject, but once you accept, then you have to actually. Uh, drop all the application from other B schools. So yes, there is an option to reject your early application decision. Yeah. So you could have your cake and eat it too in some ways. <laughs> you could get the admit and say, man, if I've gotten the admit here, I'm going to get admit elsewhere in round one. So I'm going to reject this and maybe yes. go for scholarships. OK. All right. Uh, last question for the day. And then and, and again, um, uh, if you like this uh, and if you want us to host more such webinars then then definitely post those questions and and, and, um, and you know like it on youtube and linkedin um is it hard to study not actually so not at fugue actually because professors are really chill and really helpful and even if you don't know two plus two is four um, even if you are in your mba they would be willing to help you why two or two plus two is four so i think they are really helpful and in terms of like uh, reading, I think like yeah, you just came through cases and you just and definitely you can talk about that uh, during the classroom uh, if you're contributing to something. I think yeah, I mean, it's not that uh, 
hard i think it's actually it's it's very common perception here it's very hard to get a p like we have a four grading system which four. Is, yeah so lp is low pass uh, p is pass like 3.0 hp is 3.5 and uh, uh, superior pass is 4.0 so it's very easy to get hp but it's very hard to get p so, <laughs> yeah. so like so it's it's easy to get 3.5 is what you're saying yeah 3.5 is very easy to get uh, i agree yeah. My, yeah, yeah. I, I had to really struggle to get my gpa below 3.6 <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I am not a good student i am um, yeah so so that I, I i agree with that but having said that i think one of the things that we're talking about this over here is the assignments that you get they're real assignments they you, yeah. you have to do them by yourself and and your professors do take the time to create those assignments and give you real feedback i mean the learning is real it's not book learning even though you yeah. read books in in accounting and economics the case studies um uh, that you, that you see are, are are top are basically you know real case studies and you have to use your brain to do that yeah i mean like yeah I mean, like uh, in terms of assignments it's it's heavy stuff like uh, it's not something you can just uh, wrap it up in within 30 minutes of an hour like it takes a lot of efforts and with while you are managing your recruitment also so like the the journey itself is challenging but i think you can find your ways and i think everyone has been able to so i think you will be able to as well <laughs> okay um it's an interesting question i don't know if you want to how we do justice to it but uh, what's that one thing that separates m7s from from the rest of top 20 what's the difference uh okay i think uh, i don't i'm like i don't see any difference like it's maybe a brand itself but once you get into the school i think it's all like your experience what you take out from the schools and your experience and how you open up how you, how you put yourself in un uncomfortable position because even if you are in harvard but you are very much into you and if you are in duke and you are opening uh, opening up and you are learning a lot more than what you will learn in your harvard uh, experience so it really depends on you how much you want to take from your entire mba experience how much you put your, put yourself into uncomfortable situation and you want to learn from that so i think for me i think fuqua really turned out really good maybe like uh, yeah I mean, like for me i think it really helped me to open up uh, try different things and really uh, helped me to be myself i did not uh, uh, get a, like okay i want to be something else to be a part of the community so i think that from that perspective i think i didn't think anything different uh, yeah i mean that's that's my point of view but <laughs> so i agree i think it's a difficult question to answer i think i, I in my experience when you think about a business school you're looking at your peer peer group okay you're looking at um, professors you're looking at the alumni and 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 you're looking at the curriculum there are four aspects to it um when it when i compare a top 20 with with the uh, with 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 uh, an m7 school i think if, let's kind of look at those peer group professors um uh the research that they, they do it and and the alumni so so uh, m7 definitely most of them actually have way more endowment money so they do their with regards to research they're probably about five percent better with regards to cutting edge research so so if you go to harvard if you go to mit if you go to stanford you're going to see more research in their centers of excellence that's going there so 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 that's something which i think is a benefit of m7 how much of a benefit is it probably is five to ten percent of a benefit uh, that you have over m7 um now uh about 30 years back m7 had um, way more alumni placed in in, in various in, in their traditional uh, consulting companies than then you know a few quarters for example but what has happened is with increasing demand for mbas pretty much every top 20 oh, school yes. uh, has has enough alumni placed. so i think that advantage is gone now the same way because b school education has become uh, more valuable um, every b school is actually paying professors really well so in terms of the quality of professors you would find it to be very very similar there'd be some exceptions uh, that you know for example harvard will have some really really good professors but again these professors are a very very tight knit community even at fuqua i'm sure you'd have people who did their phd at, at hbs or mit who are now teaching at fuqua so so you get excellent professors everywhere um, in terms of the peer community, just because of the natural selectivity, you'd probably get slightly smarter kids at, at an M7 school than you would get at Fuqua. 
But having said that, with regards to recruitment opportunities, with regards to the quality of professors, uh, 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 you know, you won't find a difference because, again, there's a shortage of good MBAs right now. And, and yeah. every top company is going, going to every top school. I mean, in fact, I know of students. I mean, um, for, for those of you who are aware of Shavik from, from GMAT Club, uh, he actually just graduated from Ross. That guy had an option to, to study at MIT. He preferred Ross over MIT. And, um, and, and and so similarly, I've, I've seen students who um, who actually are, are choosing, um, uh, uh, you know, other schools over M7 schools because they feel the other schools, they, they feel strongly about about that culture, um, yeah. uh, the school's culture, than then they felt about an M7 school's culture. So, so it's just, uh, in my opinion, unless, a, if you're looking for something very specific, then, you know, a top 20 school could offer you greater value than, than an M7 school would, both in terms of the education um, as well as, uh, you know, scholarships. So good question, really good question, yes. um, uh, Shivanshu, I would say. So uh, all right, guys, with that, I want to thank everyone for uh, uh, for joining us today. And I want to thank Rohan for, for taking the time out and, and, and giving these valuable insights. Rohan, it was a pleasure having you here. And again, if you want to yeah. know more about you know, folks' uh, MBA journeys, then then definitely subscribe to our channel. Um, also, if you want to know about the GMAT journeys, we, we publish about two success stories every week. So definitely subscribe to our channel and stay motivated. Um, all right. With that, happy learning and, and good luck.